Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a tapered stroke inside of GIMP using a mouse. So no pen tablet required for this tutorial. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.30 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that guys, stop by my website at daviesmediadesign.com if you haven't already for more tutorials. You can get access to additional content by becoming a DMD Premium member, including premium downloads. And you can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using this free photo from Pexels for today's tutorial. Click on the large download and click free download. All right, so a tapered stroke is going to be a stroke that starts off real thin. It's going to get a little thicker or wider as you continue to paint. And then it's just going to taper off again on the other end. So an ideal tapered stroke is going to be tapered on both ends, not just one end. So to create a tapered stroke inside of GIMP using your mouse, for starters, you're going to want to come over here to the brush tool. So this is the paintbrush tool. You can use the P key or just click on it here inside of your toolbox. So of course, normally when you paint with this, you're just gonna get an even stroke here and it will depend on what brush you have selected. Let me hit Control Z. Let's set this up real quick. So for starters, I have a hardness of 100 as my brush, which is this option here. The size I have set to around 15. Spacing I just have set to one right now. You can always come over here and just hit the reset to default values button. You'll see the spacing will change to 10 here. The size went up a little bit, so let's just go with back to 15 for that. Hardness is set to 100, force is set to 50. The dynamics are usually off to start with. And just once again painting, you'll see there is the stroke. So let me hit Control Z. We're gonna swap the color so that white is the foreground color. And let's just create a new layer, tapered stroke, and click OK. So that way we're painting on this tapered stroke layer. So to accomplish this, we'll come over here to the dynamics and we're gonna click on this little paint dynamics option. And I already have a paint dynamic option called tapered stroke. I actually created that, but you guys won't have that yet. So come over here. You should see an icon in the bottom right corner that says open the dynamic selection dialog. So we'll click on that. And now we're going to create custom dynamics. So to do that, we'll come over here to this little icon. It looks like a new document icon or something. It says create a new dynamics. We're gonna click on that and you should get the mapping matrix by default, which is all these squares. Don't worry, we only need one. So the one square we need is by size. And if we go all the way to the end, it says fade. So it's in the second row there at the end. And of course, at the very top here, we can rename this. So let's name this stroke taper just because I already have tapered stroke set up. So we have just the one box checked. Now what I'll do is come over here to the drop down, and we're gonna come down here to where it says size. And right now it's gonna be on pressure by default, so your line will be red. What we'll do is come all the way down to the bottom where it says fade. And this is a curve, just like the curves tool. And I'm just gonna click on here to create a point. And by default, you'll get a straight line. But what we can do is drag this point towards the top and we're gonna click and create another point, drag that point down to the bottom, so in my case, the bottom left, and then we'll come over here, we'll do the same thing, we'll click to create a point and drag this to the bottom. So what that'll do is create a curve now, and the curve is gonna go through this middle point, and we're gonna click and drag this all the way to the top. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell GIMP that when we first start painting, which is over here on the graph, this is gonna be as thin as the line can be, basically. And then as we move along, so as we move our mouse while we're painting, the line gets thicker. So you can think of this graph here as the thickness of the line with this being the max amount of thickness. And then once we are finished with the line, it's going to fade out. So the question now is how does GIMP know that we're done drawing the line because we're using a mouse and not a pressure sensitive Wacom tablet or something? And the answer to how GIMP knows is if we come down here in the tool options for the paintbrush tool, we've got the dynamics options here and we can actually click to expand those. And you've got an option here called fade length. 
and you should have this set to some random number. It might be zero, actually. If it's zero, it's not going to paint anything. But the fade length is going to determine the final length of the line. And right now, I have mine set to pixels. You could set it to whatever you want. So basically, you're going to set this to whatever length you want your final tapered stroke to be. And that is going to be how GIMP knows where to start and when to stop. So you'll see there, this line is about 305 pixels in length, or it should be exactly 305. And you'll see it tapers here at the beginning. It gets fat here towards the middle or thicker, and then it's going to taper off there at the end. So if we decide that that line is not long enough, I can hit Control Z, and I can increase the fade length here. And this will pretty much go out an infinite amount. So if you have a huge image or want to make a really long line, you can go out as long as you need to pretty much. But let's go out to 960 here. And now when I drag this, it'll be a longer line. But you'll see it's going to taper the line here at the beginning and at the end. And then the middle part of this is going to be thicker. So I'll hit Control Z. Another benefit to this is you can customize the tapering on the line just by adjusting the graph here. So you may not always want this to go absolutely to the thickest point of the line at the middle point of the length of your line. So let's say you want it to be thicker earlier on. You can just skew the graph to the left a little bit. And now this line, in theory, should be thick right out of the gate. Well, it'll be thin at first, thick towards the beginning. And then as you draw the line out, it should get thinner just slowly until it finally fades out. So let's see if that's the case. So you'll see when we draw here, the thicker part is towards the beginning there. And let's just push it even closer to the beginning. So there you'll see now it's even closer to the beginning. Let's go the opposite way, so thicker towards the end. There you'll see now it's thicker towards the end. And you don't have to do a perfect parabola like this. I believe that's what shape this is, or at least an arch. Uh, you can come over here, for example, and I think this is actually closer to an actual parabola shape. So you can click and create new points on here, and you'll see it's going to stay thinner for a little bit longer here because it's ducking below this original line here, but then it's going to get thicker a lot quicker and so on. So without talking too much there, you can see this is what this new setting looks like. So you can play around with the settings here, get varying degrees of thickness for varying amounts of time and really get whatever stroke you want out of that. And again, you can come over here, adjust the fade length to make it shorter or adjust the fade length to make the line longer. So let's come over here, hit reset curve. If we want to start over, let's just go back to how we had this in the beginning. Actually, screw that up. So if you want to delete a point here on the graph, you're going to click and just drag it off the page there. So now let's bring this point down. So we're back to the way we had this to start. And over here on my tapered stroke layer, let's hit the delete key. So you can do this along a path. So let's grab the paths tool. And I'm just going to create a curve that goes around her head very loosely, like so. So if we wanted to see how long this curve is and determine how long we want to make the fade length, what I can do is grab the measure tool and let's come over here to the paths tab and just unhide that path I just drew. So I have the measure tool selected here, which is shift M on the keyboard. What you can do is click and drag this and you'll see over here, it's going to give you a measurement. But of course, because this is a curve, the curve is going to be a little bit longer. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So the straight line is shorter. So really we're just estimating here. So that's 315. And then from here to here, that's a little under 300. I would probably estimate this line to be about 700 pixels. So now what I can do is come over here to my paintbrush tool and come over here to the fade length. And if I middle click with my mouse wheel, I can back up with this, hit the backspace key and manually type 700 and hit the enter key. So that's going to make our line about 700 pixels long. And I can come over here to the path we drew with the paths tool and come down here and click this icon that says paint along the path. And make sure the stroke with the paint tool is selected here. So you have two radio options, stroke line and then stroke with the paint tool. I have the paintbrush option selected, which means it'll take on whatever settings I have for my paintbrush, which is over here. And that, of course, includes the stroke taper dynamics we created. Make sure emulate brush dynamics is turned on. 
So that ensures that it will use these dynamics. And then you'll come over here and hit stroke. And there you'll see the line is a little shorter than 700 pixels, so it didn't quite taper all the way off. Or at least I think that's what happened there. But you can see that did give us a nice tapered stroke along the path. So let's do that one more time just to demonstrate. So I'll grab my paths tool and let's do a slightly longer line. Let's just go like this, bring it around the arm here. And I do have an entire tutorial on mastering the paths tool, so definitely check that out. I also have a 10 tips when using the paths tool tutorial. So here we have a much longer line. Let's hit shift M on the keyboard to grab the measure tool. And let's unhide that path we just drew over in the paths tab. So now with the measure tool, I can measure approximately how long this is. So this is about 880 as a straight line. And then from here to here, that's about 800 as well. So I would say this line is probably 1900 to 2000 pixels. So we'll come over here, we'll grab the paintbrush and let's just make it a little shorter. So we'll go 1900, hit the enter key. Let's say we also want to make the line a little thicker overall so we can increase this to 20. And now with our settings ready to go on that path we just created, I'll come over here and I'm going to click to create a new stroke. So once again, paintbrush is the tool. Emulate brush dynamics is turned on. So I'll come over here, click stroke, and there you'll see the result of that. It's a little thicker than this line over here, and I made it a little longer. I think 1900 was probably too long. If I wanted to, I can always hit control Z, click on here, switch that to 1800, click stroke, stroke again. So that's a little closer that time. So that's really two methods for creating tapered strokes using your mouse. You can always use the pressure sensitivity that comes with a drawing tablet if you have a drawing tablet, but that is a simple way to taper your strokes in GIMP. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.